All right, so um, we have been talking about Song Dynasty, which is about the 10th century. And then uh, before this, of, uh, 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 this meeting, Pin and I just discussed this time, this period of time. Actually, it's probably equivalent or sometimes more important, more dynamic than the so-called warring state at 5, 500, uh, 2,500 years ago. Okay, so sometimes because today people don't talk that much or being viewed in a certain way, and we don't see the dynamic of that. So if we go through that, you probably will see the variety probably as different as different schools in the uh, 500 BC. Okay, so uh, I, I, that's why I think that's important to take a close look. Uh, during this period of time. So Nick, today we will talk about, last week we talked about the uh, uh, two uh, uh, metaphysics or we talk cosmologists, okay? So, uh, Sao Yong and Zhou Dunyi. And then uh, one focus on the uh, number, okay? And the other one focus on the five element. They try to build the universe, the cos cosmology. And the next week I'm going to make a little bit uh, uh, focus on the qi, which is zhang zai, okay? And uh, he basically, I think everybody, today everybody talk about qi, and the qi can go everywhere, from the kung fu to the health and to the philosophy, and then actually to the ghost, that's also related to the qi. So this week we're going to talk about this for, uh, next week. And uh, right now I'm going to give to Pin, yeah, to talk about, because we need to celebrate uh, Halloween and then mm -hmm. about the uh, story. And I like it, I don't know what Pin is going to focus on, but I think that's important is the background, uh, 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 how Chinese, uh, that's the 18th century, right? How 18th century Chinese see the underworld, okay? And then you will see the, the Confucian bureaucratic system has been built, not only in the secular world, also in the underworld. And the, the royal exam, okay, uh, the imperial exam has been practiced for, I think about 800 years during that time. And then it has been in everybody's mind, any learned person's mind, uh, the matter you are alive or you death, it's still in your mind. So uh, that's a very different situation. So I, uh, I think the king is going to uh, have a more, Okay, so let's start the pin. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, Nick. No. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jason. Let me share my screen. Okay, I assume everyone can see my PowerPoint just fine. So as Jason said, today we're going to delve into a story from a very, still even today, I would say, a very popular book of Chinese classical literature. And it's the first, actually the first story of 491 stories in this book. So let's just... Uh, Go right, get in, right into it. So a quick outline. Um, first, I'm going to start with some basic info for everyone, just the who, where, when, and what of this book and the story and the author. And then I'll say a few words about the legacy of this, uh, of this book. And as Jason said, it's, uh, there's, the, it's a short little story that really actually encapsulates a lot of concepts in traditional Chinese spirituality. So I'm going to give some background explanations so that when we actually read the story, it's much easier to, to understand it and interpret it. And then we're, we're going to read the original text. And then I'm going to further expand upon, upon some, just point out some of the other 
concepts that's embedded in this short little story. And then open up for discussion. I, I pose some questions just to, just to help move the discussion initiated, but we don't have to use those questions. Um, I'll say probably my motivation for doing this story is that a couple of times in my life, I've been asked by people not from the Chinese culture, the simple question, is there religion in China? And it's a very simple question that I actually always find myself tongue-tied, not knowing how to answer it, because it's a question that demands a yes or no answer. And I feel like either answer would be very misleading. Uh, on one hand, I can say yes, and that would be a correct answer. Of course, there is a prominent religion called Taoism, rel religious Taoism that's indigenous to China. But you look at what people actually practice and believe in traditionally, even though often we just attribute it to Taoism because there's no other better attribution, but in fact, it's not really Taoism. And then uh, if I say no, that would be a kind of a correct answer because the religion, uh, religious beliefs in China is very different from what we think of in the West, where, for example, Christianity, um, Judaism, uh, not necessarily West, of course, you know, the, um, Islam, there is, it's a uh, very much more structured and constant uh, structure. There, there's one book, one scripture book, there's one God. Whereas uh, in the Chinese uh, belief system, it's very nebulous, very dynamic, uh, Things it's it's really more like a, a parallel universe that also evolves with the one that we're living in. So anyway, that's uh, I won't get too much into it. But I really think this this one little story is is a good intro and good little platform for us to to peer a, a little window to peer into this. So let's start with the author. Who was this guy, Hu Songlin? Well, he was born in the late Ming Dynasty in 1640 AD into a middle-class merchant family. And as most middle-class families of that time, you aspire to and discipline yourself to study and take the imperial exams. I hope to excel in it and get assigned to become a government professor, uh, sorry, government official, and move up the social ranks that way. So that's what he did. And just to set the scene, this, uh, he was born into the very uh, last days of the Ming Dynasty. It was a very tumultuous times, whereas uh, re large scale rebellions starting in the 1630s, uh, and uh, eventually the Manchurian invasion brought down the Ming dynasty, at which time the Manchus established the last dynasty in Chinese history, the Qin dynasty. So he was born into very tumultuous, uh, chaotic and violent times. And uh, when the Qin dynasty was established, he was a young chap. and He started taking the imperial exams. Uh, initially, he did very well, got a lot, placed very high uh, at the lower levels and received some honors, but he was stuck there. Even though he, his first uh, successful exam was at age 19, he was stuck at the county level uh, until, uh, even until age 72, where he got special honors for the county level, but still, he never was able to move up into the provincial level and the national level. And therefore he never got assigned a, a, a real government job. So he made his living instead by being a tutor for children of prominent families. And also he did some stints 
as a as a advisor, staff advisor for government officials, and because of this work as as advisory staff, uh, gave him an opportunity to travel out of his home province to in northern China and travel to southern China to Jiangsu province, where and this has benefited his benefited his uh, story collection. He is always his true passion, aside from taking the exams, um, um, is he's always been an avid story collector since age 20. Purportedly, he set up roadside stands uh, selling tea and smokes and offering, uh, and this has a way to stop uh, passersby and ask them if they have some, any kind of wild, interesting, stories to share and people who gave him a worthwhile story, he will, he will in return give them a, a, a bowl of millet and mung bean porridge. And he passed away in Qin Dynasty at the age of 76. So just to show geographical context, he was born in Northern China in the Shandong uh, Peninsula. Uh, Qingdao is to the east on the peninsula, and that's where the popular Qingdao beer is being made these days. And uh, for his work, he traveled to the Yangtze River Delta to uh, Jiangsu province for, I think only just for a year or so. So being, uh, having led a modest left style with modest income, he didn't have the money to publish his book, even though he really wanted to. But uh, many copies were shared among his friends and peers. And he continued to revise his stories until his death. And finally, 51 years after his death, this book was published in 1766. And actually half, and the original manuscript was passed from generation to generation in his family. And even today, half of the original manuscript is now in the Liaoning Library in mainland China. This is the only extant manuscript of any classical Chinese novel. So just to put the, uh, the time frame into the greater context of Chinese history, this chart on the upper left is the first known Chinese dynasty, the Xia Dynasty, about 4,000 years ago. And his lifetime falls towards later periods here in the, at the juncture of uh, the Ming and Qing dynasties. Uh, Jason, you have your hand up. You have a question or a comment? Yeah, I, I do have a question. Uh, on the previous slide, uh, uh, you talk about uh, health law original medicine now is uh, the, you know, the, the only manuscript, classic novel, okay? So uh, you are you talking about the outside this book is the only classic novel? No, the only one that were the original manuscript, you know, the, the actual writing. Oh, okay. The writing okay. of okay. the author uh, still survives today. Okay, so yeah. I, I'm interested, this one is, I find out that the language is very different than other we so-called classic novel, Chinese novel. I don't know you you noticed that or not. I know that I, I feel this way and that, I, I read that one not by in not because enjoy the story. I probably enjoy the the writing style. You know? Yeah, I, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. That, that's my personal feeling. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a great writer, and uh, like you said, he has a very unique uh, style. And I'll, I'll get into that. I'll touch on that just a little bit. And uh, so, what is this book? It's four hundred a collection of 491 folk-inspired stories uh, based on his 
elaborated and fantasized based on the stories that he's collected actually from real people in his lifetime. And many of these stories involve uh, fox and snake fairies, ghosts, demons, and other supernatural phenomena, and many heroines. <clears throat> It, the writing style uh, that Jason and I were just touching on, it follows, uh, partly inherits a, the tradition of Tang Dynasty short stories, which also uh, tells many of these exotic stories from actually sometimes from people from all over the world that uh, lived in China. And so it has a very uh, style, a very concise language and exotic uh, topics. But it stands out, it really has, it is not just inheriting that cell, it's actually, I would say, improved it by a lot, especially in the areas of plot and character development. And uh, that really have the re reader build a, 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 a connection to the characters. I really start to care about the characters. So the abundance of love stories between humans and demons and spirits uh, induces the reader's emotional connection to characters, despite that they are, they are demons, that, that despite our preconditioned fear and disgust of such beings. The, it's also often perceived as a social commentary book, that the just, just the position of lovable demons and cruel, corrupt government officials. Black! Wait, what? Is that Black Ben? Um, it expands that or actually inverts the reader's notion of what, what is lovable, what is noble, and what is evil and despicable. So this actually, in my opinion, follows this, this uh, style of using fantastic stories to break pre-established human conceptions of good or bad. Is a follows the tradition of Zhuangzi's Taoist writing tradition. So, As far as the legacy of this book, it's really a truly has it's been a very lasting popular book. It's lasting popularity for the past 250 plus years since it was first published. Uh, it's of, also of really historical value uh, as historical document because it, the rich portrayal of pe common people's lives, how people actually live, I'm very, really very honest and uh, frank portrayal without all these moral uh, cover-ups <laughs> of society, I, I think is very precious. Uh, people's lives in the 17th and 18th century China. This captures many aspects that complements official history books. I'll just name a couple of examples that, can, uh, that can, I can mention off the top of my head. The story, the martial heroine, reveals uh, the prevalence of casual, straight, and gay sexual relationships at that time. And the story, Quick Knife, uh, it, it was a story of beheadings. It really depicts, illustrates the widespread unrest and oppression in late Ming Dynasty China. And it's also a gateway book due to its, uh, the nature that the storytelling and uh, popularity for many people, probably including myself, to uh, start dabbling into classical Chinese. Uh, the great uh, 20th century scholar Hu Si claimed that Liao Zhai, in fact, is the real book where people learn how to write Chinese, uh, read and write Ch classical Chinese. That just has claimed, but uh, no. um, about a dozen or so of the most popular stories have been wildly popular, has been made into countless movies, operas, cartoons, and TV shows. And it's had, in that respect, it's had 
very uh, clear influence on martial arts novels and movies. Uh, for example, the prevalence of female warriors and heroines. So here I'll just play a little trailer of one of the more popular movies uh, that's become pretty popular in the West too. Now I'm not very good with Zoom. So I hope you can hear and play this, see this fine. If not, please let me know. No sound. No sound. Under the share, under the share screen, there's a share sound button. That beautiful girl is a ghost, so. <laughs> Spoiler. Yeah, the boy and then uh, uh, the travel and the stay in a small temple and the see a beautiful girl. And that girl is actually is a, a ghost. Okay. Yeah, ruin the ending for us. Spoiler. Uh, the ending is, uh, well, I think we all, Pin and I probably, we watch in the same age, you know, probably more attracted by the beauty of the girl more than <laughs> All right, I hope everyone enjoyed that. <laughs> Show a little trailer to give you a little visual uh, imagery of these stories. So let's get into some of the concepts that I feel like it would be very helpful to explain before we delve into the story uh, to help us understand and interpret the story. So very important, writing the title of this, this uh, this story is called Kao Cheng Huang, means exam to become a Cheng Huang, which I translate as the under, underworld mayor. So who and what is the, a Cheng Huang? So Cheng Huang, virtually all Chinese provinces, counties, cities, and towns have, or at least once, once had a Cheng Huang temple. And the words Chen and Huang in Chinese written here, literally Chen means town and Huang means the moat that's, uh, that surrounds the, the, the town wall. So the Chen Huang is a, is a job title. Uh, it uh, refers to the mayor or a governor uh, governing from the underworld. So the duties of this job include protecting the jurisdiction, whatever county or town or city is under the Chen Huang's jurisdiction. And a very important duty is also to reward the good, punish the bad, and determine people's lifespans based on that. And the identity, like I said, this, this is a job title. So that job, at different posts are filled by different people. Well, not, you know, not living people, but dead people. So the identity of the Chen Huang is all usually ascribed to the spirit of a celebrated person that lived, um, that, that's been, that's already deceased. And depending on local traditions, uh, the Chen Huang for a particular town can have limited terms. 
And uh, so every so many years, there will be a new Chenghua. And that uh, sometimes could even be, according to local tradition, could be you know, through a democratic process, uh, some kind of election. And uh, some cities like Shanghai have multiple Chenghuas for, for the same city. And the prevalence of this tradition dates back to at least the Han Dynasty, uh, about 2000 years. So yeah, just to explain, uh, in the Chinese tradition, gods and deities can be deceased humans, can be animals. Uh, there is a famous, very popular tem temple in northern Taiwan, uh, in, Dan in Jinshan. Uh, I think Jason probably knows the Ba Wang Gong Miao where the god there is a, is a dog. And, and people, a lot of people go there and worship. Uh, can be an old tree, can be mountain spirits, uh, so on and so forth. And so just to give you an example of a Chen Huang temple, this is uh, in my hometown of Taipei. So the history of this temple, right now it's in the, one of the busiest areas in, in Taipei. Uh, about a hundred migrants from mainland China, from Zhangzhou, Fujian province, traveled, when they traveled to Taiwan, they carry the statue of this Chen Huang from their hometown with them uh, to protect them and help them have a safe journey across the Taiwan Strait. So this happened in 1821, they brought the, 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 the statue. And uh, after so many years, they managed to get land from a Qing Dynasty official, Admiral Su Feiran, uh, who was the vice Navy commander in Taiwan at that time. So he donated land to, so that uh, people can build a temple to host this god. And today, if you ever happen to be in Taipei, you can go to uh, the Dihua Jie, uh, Dihua Street in Taipei and uh, take a look. So here are some pictures. This is the upper right is the temp building of the temple itself. It's, it's a small, it's a small temple. And um, uh, pictures, this is upper left is one of the guardians. Uh, the guards of the of Chen Huang. Uh, lower left is just a close up picture of one of the lanterns in the temple. Uh, in the lower right, in the center, is the Chen Huang uh, <clears throat> himself and uh, guarded by his staff on the left and right. So, okay, so what's the underworld and uh, what happens there? Well, we currently live in the Yang dimension, according to Chinese tradition. Yang is the same as uh, what you hear when you uh, hear yin and yang. It's the same word in Chinese. And upon die, death, the world of the dead is the yin, sorry, this should be, there's no G there. Is a yin, uh, just uh, remove the G here, it's a misspelling. Is a yin dimension. And uh, so the transition when one dies from the yang to the yin can happen in one of two ways. So if the person has been evil, one of the pair, two pairs of death officers will come to get you. Uh, there's one pair is called uh, the black non-constant. This is my translation, so it may not be correct. And the white non-constant. So Hei Wu Chang and Bai Wu Chang. Well, another pair is the bovine head and the horse face. So on the right here, you see uh, two statues uh, depicting these two. The, there's the horse head on the left and uh, the, the bovine uh, horse face, I'm sorry, on the left and the bovine head on the right. And uh, to arrest the person's, that bad person's soul to the yin dimension. So 
I hope for all of us here, we'll never need the knowledge of what uh, these two look like. And, and Warner, now for most people, <clears throat> the Warner people, the soul initially wanders in confusion because the person hadn't realized that that had happened. So the, 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 so that, that person is still thinking that he or she is still alive. And this can happen for up to six days. Because you see, the, the government in the yin dimension is very busy. So it depends on how soon they can send uh, an agent to break the news to you. Uh, so the longest delay is six days. But by or before the seventh day, a local god, and according to some traditions, is what we call the Tu Di Gong, uh, shows up. Uh, and tell the soul uh, what had happened and help the soul to accept that. And sometimes uh, the God has to show, to convince the person, has to show the person what the decayed body looks like and also show the funeral ceremonies of the family members to help the, the soul accept that he or she is dead. And then escort the soul to Chen Huang's court. So Chen Huang's court is the first stop in the yin dimension where the initial trial is conducted. So as I said, an evil person will be sentenced to Di Yu. So Di Yu uh, literally mean, means earth prison or hell. So Di Yu has 18 levels of increasing suffering. So depending on your crime, uh, you get sentenced to a, a particular level. And this includes the most famous levels include climbing a mountain of knives and being stir fried in the walk. So, and this is uh, sometimes, you know, if someone really pisses you off, this is what you curse people with. And, but ordinary people reincarnate <clears throat> according to the assignment by the officials in the underworld. Uh, and this happens within 49 days. So, seven times seven. And, Extraordinarily good people get promoted to godhood and gets assigned uh, of the appropriate bureaucratic rank in uh, in in the afterworld, in, in heaven, if you will, if you will. Um, now, this is also very important. When the god comes and get people and escort them to the yin world. Some people have, due to extreme resolved issues, for example, people who have suffered great injustice in the living world, uh, people who were murdered, uh, you know, there is a lot of pain and unresolved suffering. A few of those souls sometimes will refuse to move on to the yin dimension and linger on forever in the yang dimension. So that's a very, very sad, those are very, very sad cases in, in the Chinese belief. They become ghosts that can haunt living human beings. So this is the origin of the existence of ghosts. And they are commonly referred to in our language as lonely souls and feral ghosts, gu huan ye gui. So a most important objective of the Chinese funeral ceremonies is to help convince the soul that it's okay for them to move on and also have a smooth journey to the yin dimension. And by the way, the, this, uh, at the Cheng Huang is just a preliminary trial. All trials are reviewed by higher courts in the other world. And uh, sometimes people can make appeals all the way to the emperor of, uh, of heaven, or actually there's an emperor of hell too. So it probably goes to the emperor of hell. Um, 
Another quick thing to point out before we start reading the story is the Chinese character Ren. Ren is uh, a Confucianist concept, kind of the highest virtue uh, that one should strive to achieve. And it's roughly translated as benevolence, kindness, or humanity in, in English. And this character comprises two parts. The left side is a character for person or human. And uh, I have it here, that's what it looks like. And the right side is actually the character for the number two. So the character for Ren is, is the person plus two becomes a character for Ren. So the interpretation here is that benevolence and kindness is about how people interact with one another. So the ancient people created this character to re, uh, represent this concept. So let's um, now actually read the story itself. And it's a very short story. So uh, if you bear with me, because uh, I think there's probably a couple of people in the audience who actually speak Chinese. I would like to read it in Chinese. It'll take just a couple of minutes. And also, I think at the end, uh, the pe people who don't read Chinese will appreciate how concise classical Chinese reading can be. Because this is one page in Chinese, and there's a little over three pages in English. Okay. So I'll read this. Um, 与姐夫之祖, 宋公会陶, 一秉身, 一日病卧, 建立持叠千, 白点马来, 允请复试, 公事壮丽无心为恶虽恶不伐有长须力捧策翻院一过自言母国族迎葬祭毕晚敌入世而没其月家居城中西门内忽见共楼音诸坟与马圣中登其堂一拜而行相共经已不知其为神
now let's read it uh, in the English translation. Actually, can I get, maybe we'll do tag team on this. Uh, can I get a volunteer to read the first page here? There's about three pages. I can do it. Great, thank you. My elder sister's husband's grandfather, the late Mr. Song Tao, was a salaried licentate in our city. One day, while lying ill, he saw an official servant with a document leading a horse with a white forehead who approached him with a message. You are summoned to an examination, he said. Song answered, the provincial examiner has not yet arrived. Why should I hurry to be examined? The messenger did not reply, but pressed him to go. Song overcame his sickness, got on the horse and followed after. The road was quite strange. They reached a city resembling the capital of a prince. They shortly entered a palace with a very beautiful and imposing buildings. Ten or more officials were seated at the upper end of one hall, all strangers to him, except Guan Zhuang Wu, um, <laughs> Guan Di, god of war, whom he recognized. Below, under the eaves, were put two tables and two stools. There was a candidate already seated at the end. Song then sat down shoulder to shoulder with him. Brushes and paper were laid out on the tables. Suddenly, a piece of paper with a theme on it fluttered down from above. Looking at it, they saw the eight following words. One person, two persons, with intention, without intention. When they both finished their essays, they passed them up. Oh, uh, you're such a great story reader. Would would you mind continuing? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> uh, can you switch the page for the screen? Yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. okay. In Song's essay, there was the following passage. For a good deed that is intended, there is to be no reward. For wrong that is unintended, there is to be no punishment. It was unanimously praised as it was circulated among the deities, and Song was summoned into their presence and thus ordered, Henan province lacks a city god. You are designated to this post. Song then realized what had happened. He, had, he kowtowed and wept, saying, I am highly and unworthily honored with your commands. How could I dare refuse? And yet my old mother is 70 some years old and there's no one to care for her. I beg of you to permit me to wait until the end of her destined life and then I will be at your disposal. There was one among them resembling an emperor who commanded that they search out his mother's term of life. A servant with a long beard brought in a large record book and turning leaves over and examined it and reported that nine years still remained for her to live. They were all in a quandary, but Guan Di said, "Never mind. let candidate Zhang act in his place and after nine years he shall be relieved. And then he said to Song, you ought to proceed at once to your post, but in consideration of your filial affection, a leave of nine years is granted to you, after the end of which term you will again be summoned. He also addressed words of encouragement to the other candidate. They both made their ob ob obeisance and stepped down. The other candidate took Song's hand and led him out into the countryside. He told him that his name was Zhang and he was from Changshan. As a parting gift, he presented him with a bit of verse. I have forgotten all that was in it, but it included these lines. If we have flowers and have wine, we enjoy a turtle spring. Lacking candles, lacking lamps, the night itself to us is bright. Song then got upon his horse and bidding them farewell left. Having arrived at his village, he became conscious as if waking from a dream. He had been dead for three days. His mother heard groans in the coffin and helped him out. It was some time before he was able to speak. He asked about Chang San and found that there really was a candidate named Zhang who had died the same day he had. Nine years later, his mother died. When the funeral was over, Song performed his washings, went to his room and died. His wife's parents lived inside the city near the Western gate. They suddenly saw Song followed by many carriages and horses with festive trappings and red tassel bridles arrive at, the pal at their place, enter the hall, make his obeis obe obeisance and go. They were all astonished and alarmed, not knowing that he had become a spirit. They hastened to his village to inquire and found that he had just died. Is that it? Uh, there's 
It's not that screen. Oh, okay. It hasn't updated. Okay. Uh, well, I, I'll read this last sentence. Thank you, Karen. That that was really really awesome. Oh, there it is. I can finish you. Son oh, okay. had made his son had made his own records of his experiences, but unfortunately, in the confusion and disturbances at the end of the Ming Dynasty period twenty, they were lost. This is only a bare sketch of the story. Great, great. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you read it. Uh, I I would have a lot of problem with that word uh, of obeisance. <laughs> And so there's some uh, concepts that's in, embedded in, in this short little story. Um, one is the very popular Chinese belief of ji yin de. Uh, ji means accumulate in Chinese. Uh, yin de, okay, let me explain a little bit. Yin, again, this is the same character as, as in yin and yang. De, uh, and this word yin has a lot of different meanings. Uh, as you know from your studies in Taoist philosophy, uh, yin is the, the negative uh, energy uh, and it could represent uh, female or dark or, but in, in this case it's, it, its meaning is obscurity. And de is also the same de as in Dao De Jing, or uh, some, some people say Dao De Jing. Uh, so normally in common language, its rough meaning is virtue, or uh, a, a, an accumulation of good deeds. So the 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 rough translation here is accumulation of obscured virtue. And here's the, the belief is that when you do a good deed in life, uh, if, if it's the kind that's, that no one else knows, that it's unnoticed uh, or unrecognized, this is a kind of virtue that's, that's gonna uh, earn you credits when you go to the yin dimension. Uh, things are good things that you, you have done here and other people know about it and you've been recognized, you, know, you won praises, you, you got the awards, whatever, that you already been, you already been rewarded for that. So that, that doesn't get you any points uh, after you die. Or, well, not even after you die. It, it doesn't give you any points in, in the, in the in Chen Huang's uh, record book, okay. So <clears throat> another, of course, concept uh, touched on here is the imperial exams to become government officials. And then there's another concept uh, we say in Chinese is Tian Shu. Uh, Tian means sky or heaven uh, or divine, and Shu is number. So this is a concept that that there, there's this divine being, these supernatural beings like Chen Guang and other officials there that are actually keeping books on everyone. And, also, and they determine your ultimate fate. So this is some, something that's determined somewhere, somewhere else. Although by doing good things or doing bad things, you can change that, uh, that uh, computation there. So, uh, and then uh, another uh, rather Chinese concept that doesn't have quite the same equivalent in, in English is the best translation is filial piety here. So yeah, so anyway, we gone through the main part of that. So let's you know, open up for discussion just to help facilitate. We don't have to use these questions. I try to come up with them just as a seed. So how do you interpret Song Tao's answer to the exam question? For a good deed that is not intended, there is to be no reward. For a wrong that is unintended, there, is, there shall be no punishment. And uh, what's your interpretation? Do you agree with the value system that it conveys? Uh, how do you interpret the poem that uh, the other guy gave him? 
If we have flowers, we have wine. We enjoy eternal spring. Lacking candles, lacking lamps, the night itself to us is bright. And from the story, what can change faith? And what changed the God's decision? And why, why, is the first why is this the first story of Pusoni's book? Uh, and anyway, these are certainly, there's no right or wrong answers. Uh, there's everyone can have a different answer from this author. So anyway, I'll, I'll stop talking. Thank you, thank you all so much. Madeline, you have, you have your hand up. Yes, uh, thank you, Penn. <clears throat> thank you, Jason. Uh, let's see. Well, I had a couple of comments and then a question. Um, I think that this story began and ended with um, establishing verisimilitude. In other words, it happened to my sister's husband's grandmother's neighbor. Yeah. And then at the very end, there is, and there were witnesses. They saw the spirit going into the temple. So there are witnesses on either end, which kind of establish that the thing is true within a ghost story framework. Uh, I was wondering about the exam. Is this the eight-legged exam system essay? Uh, yeah. I think it was called. And then um, I was wondering if it was <clears throat> a logic problem <laughs> in some way, like one man with intention, one man something without intention, two men with intention, two men without intentions. And then if we're supposed to try to fit his answer into that, or am I just overthinking that? Oh, uh, you're, you're right. Um, so this is actually a good, uh, someone else, I uh, just know this, sorry, I haven't been looking at the chat box till now, uh, asked what, what was the exam question. So yeah, we should, we should discuss that in a little depth. And this is actually a pretty good portrayal of the vagueness of these uh, typical exam questions in the ancient time. And it's almost like a little puzzle. So the exam question, uh, let's see, it's on the bottom here. Uh, it's at the very bottom of the slide. One person, two persons, with intention, without intention. So uh, for a long time, I told, I, I, I was pretty confused by this. And, and I, I, here's my interpretation is, this is why I actually did a little spiel on the character Jin. So one person is, is just a person. Two persons point to the character Jin, which is person and two. So, so, the, so the way that uh, the main character of the story, he, he solved this puzzle is that, ah, this is what they're, they're trying to get at is one person is, is humans, two persons is, is benevolence. And then, and then the next is with intention, without intention. And you're supposed to, your essay is supposed to somehow you first solve this puzzle and then come up with some ideas about social governance. So this is where he, so he saw this, he said, ah, oh, okay. So this two persons points to the, to the concept of, of benevolence and humanity or uh, work doing good deeds. And, and then he came up with a, with a theme that if you do a good deed with intention and, I, you know, the, as usual, it's hard to translate Chinese, because yeah, there can be many different meanings. So with intention, really what, what it means in my interpretation is that with intention means you, you, you're doing some good deed with the idea that you get rewarded. You're gonna earn praises. You're gonna get recognized in this world, in this living world, current world. And without intention is when you just do good deeds because you're, you're just a good person. You know, you just, you just like helping people. And you never even thought about, oh, maybe some good work. No. So, that, that's, so, he's, you know, so his thesis was, if you do it with intention, 
you shall not be rewarded. Uh, if you do it with, with uh, also the same with when you do it wrong without intention, you shall not be punished uh, because it's a genuine mistake. And this is why I also say, you know, this in, in embedded in this story is this uh, traditional concept. I, I shouldn't even say tradition is still very much alive today. Is ji yin de, accumulate obscure uh, virtue, obscure good deeds. You know, do good stuff, um, but don't let anyone know about it because that's how you earn credit. Um, so that that's that's uh, that's my take on. I see Jason and Joseph. Uh, yeah, um, I'd, I'd like to answer your question, right? Why uh, this one put in the first, right? I think it's a very obvious. Uh, it, that, that's a very uh, cutting throat, this kind of system. So if you don't pass to the third level, you really, you see it to, to the, and how, how many years old, 70 years old, still in the same stuff? 72, he's still yeah, stuck at yeah, the same so, the first level. So some people came to the highest level, like 19 years old, but some people, just, just like you got the first grade, you know, the best student in the primary school, but you never able to enter the middle school. So, and you always know you are the best student when you were in uh, primary school, but you, for some reason, you just not pass the enter, enter exam for the middle school or high school, and they forget about college. So this kind of frustration, and then I found his writing, I really appreciate his language, his, the word he used is very concise and much, much better than the world, the, uh, the, 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 the classic novel I keep talking about, like Journey to the West or the uh, 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 Romance of Rigor, his, his language <clears throat> is very concise, very good one. So I can feel, so the word is he is over-educated person, but under employee, right? Yeah. So this is uh, the situation. So he will expect in the afterlife, he will have something, I think he's just projecting, you know, uh, will have this kind of, in the way, he is uh, protesting, hopelessly protest, you know, this kind of system, I think. And uh, a smart thing is I find out it's a pretty common from the West and from the East for this kind of story writing, right? They try to write the strange story and they try to tell you at the beginning, right? My, what was it? My, uh, uh, my, my brother's wife's uh, grandfather, this kind of far distance to show it's true. And to the end, right? He tell you uh, when the person died and then uh, his uh, father-in-law saw him walk through by some place. So in a way tell you that's a true story, but in a way also tell you for the long distance and the loss of the paper tell you, unfortunately, I'm sorry, I cannot find the solid evidence to prove it, but it is true. So I think that's pretty common. Uh, I think I see this kind of style in Western and in uh, Chinese uh, uh, strange story like Yeah, yeah, thank you, Jason. Yeah, I, I also, uh, my take on this is that this is some kind of self-portrayal. You know, whether he's um, the main character or the other character, or both, probably both, you know, he, he's, uh, projecting uh, himself on, onto both characters there. Uh, Joseph and, and Kanishka after. So, uh, so, um, I'll just, I this, the, I, I just like the idea for the, a good deed that is intent and uh, that is intended, there will be no reward. Um, I just think of that as something like a duty that you're something you're supposed to do. Uh, and so therefore you're just following, you know, the natural way of doing your, you know, whatever it is that an action that you're taking. Um, but for the person that is unintended doing a good thing is this, they're good at the core. They're just doing it because, you know, that's who they are and there's something deeper there. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and I think that there's something that is intrinsic to the person themselves. So that mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's one way of looking at that. 
and for unintended that there's no punishment, um, I can, you know, I think that's reasonable uh, because uh, obviously that, you know, you, if you don't intend to hurt someone, I mean, then it's, you could do quite a horrible thing, but at the same time, um, you know, you weren't necessarily aware. And that's actually still represented in, in our law today. It requires a certain level of intent. Um, so I, that's the way I just read those three kinds of approaches to as far as intention and, and, um, and, uh, and reward and punishment or non-punishment. Yeah, great points, great points, thank you. Uh, Kanishka, uh, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes, that is correct. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, so about why is this the first story of uh, Pusong's book? Uh, I think, it, and even about the question, I don't think it was an exam question either. It was just a statement and it was an assertion that how do you assert your decisions itself as good and bad? Uh, because if you would see the exam uh, paper, it wasn't a question mark at the end. It was just a sentence, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one person, two person with intention, without intention. And how the person taking that exam uh, interprets that depends on how much of uh, uh, values that particular person has had to follow in their life, lifetime itself. And uh, when it comes to uh, asserting good versus bad and whether whatever you're doing is good or bad, this is the kind of uh, assertion that you can use that are you, uh, are you uh, interpreting the question correctly first and then going in towards your uh, deed or the task that you want to do. So watching yourself first and then the others or watching your actions first and how it would benefit the other would be, is the reason why the story is first in that person's book is what I think. Oh, great points, great point, thank you. Um, DLJ and then Ginny. Yeah, hi, thanks. Um, yeah, I was thinking about the two persons bit. Um, I'm just wondering whether that means with or without witnesses. So it strikes me as the, uh, I think it's Gospel of Matthew, about praying in public. Uh, mm. Yeah, that kind of thing. So what mm. if, yeah, so it's not, not just a case of doing it with intent or not, but doing it for show. So if there's another witness doing good, I mean, um, yeah, anyway, that. So I thought that was the one person, two person thing. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting uh, perspective. Uh, also, the yeah, the connection, the the comparison to um, to the book of Matthew. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And Ginny, I just want to respond to the first um, line. For a good deed that is intended, there is no, there is to be no reward. Um, I agree with that because a person who does a good deed, uh, just to do a good deed, they don't expect any reward. But a person who does good deeds so that they can receive reward, they don't deserve to get a reward. So I, I like I like what he says on the first line. And for wrong that is unintended, that is to be no pun. Yeah, I agree with that as well. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Appreciate it. I, I you know, because I, it's interesting. It, it could be controversial, right? That, that it, in a way, um, it seems a little bit counterintuitive. But so, so I, I'm very interested in what, whatever, uh, whether you agree or not. And uh, um, Kevin, and uh, and then I see Madeline and D L J. Thank you, Ping. Uh, my interpretation based your question, and here's uh, the question you ask is about uh, one person, two person, how hard or without hard. So that's uh, his answer about uh, has hard with, uh, uh, with this uh, translation, with good deed. Um, 
if you intention to do something good, it's no award. Yeah, and without without intention did something wrong, no punishment. It kind of makes sense. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, in modern days, law, we consider that, right? You got a mental issue, or maybe you consider that's uh, something, yeah, you, that's uh, something new in modern days, right? We, we not consider you going to take serious, uh, go to prison or re reduce your punishment. A second question, do you agree with the uh, value system? Uh, I not just myself agree. I would say that's in practice in Chinese society. I would say uh, we would say when Jing the especially your last slide. I would say you can go back that about Jing the basically build uh, accumulate in the build up your the in modern days we talking here when we live is young it's Confucius practice. Another side that's a beautiful. I would say you print. From this uh, 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 novel is uh, not just we live the young side of the world. We also got a yin side world, yin and yang. You see about cosmology, that's something we didn't notice. I didn't notice. Um, and uh, examination is here also the uh, imperial exam uh, in the uh, living world. Also, Chenghua, right, a city. Uh, a town and uh, that also need need examination too from the in world, mm -hmm. very interesting. And here's number that's a tier heaven a sky number tier is heaven right. We can I I prefer use this original sky number. We also qi su this number that's how we Chinese mm -hmm. use su number. <clears throat> from we describe uh, white dynasty. Okay, three hundred years. You see. Uh, the dynasty got trouble in finance, internal, external, internal rebellion, external invade. Some prediction they go to qi su qi. Uh, if inner number or qi number, we know if yes, Chinese we know the qi. That's also number. It's very interesting to see. The last last one, uh, filial piety. Answer your another question. What can change the uh, the God? Yeah. yeah, back to the society. You can back to another slice. Yeah, what what changed the God's decision? That's a filial piety. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's uh, yeah from this uh, soon right? Soon told I love this job. However, I got my old uh, mother old, um, so at home until she. Then that's why check a book. They also check the his mother how how longer live again ninety years. So at the same day after ninety year, after he, his mom passed, he also passed away. Very interesting. Um, and back to the, this uh, the last, how do you interpret the poem? Very interesting for my personally. Uh, I would say that's ordinary life. Yes, you have flower with wine, spring, which means it's spring is beautiful thing, in, especially north, north of China. It basically not too cold, not too warm. It's just perfect. You, you, and you have green uh, and lots of food growing up. Everything is like uh, boomed. And so that's the moment you enjoy. Another sentence is no, um, no candle. Uh, no lamp, no, but the night itself is bright. I would consider a couple interpreting. First one is uh, about when you passed away, you didn't see the light from the our villain. So I will no worry. You still the light itself light. I believe that guy enjoy his job. He going to the place. Uh, Sun Tao do the uh, officer, Chenghua officer. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to pause here. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I um, yeah, I, I also have some similar thoughts about the filial piety. That was that uh, you know in the story, he brought this up, and this was enough to change the gods' minds. You know when he said. I need to look after my mother, uh, who was very old. 
then the gods certainly pause. You know, that that's that overrules everything. The gods pause and say, you know, let's 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 come up with a workaround to make this happen. And uh, the the poem to uh, also to explain Kevin's answer a little bit, I, I uh, in the beginning he said he translated the the exam question as uh, the second part as have have heart and no heart. That's a literal translation. It's actually what it what it says in Chinese. Uh, heart in Chinese could also could mean intent. So that's uh, that's that's where it is. And the well, anyway, I, I I have also some maybe later some interpretations of this poem uh, to share, uh, but uh, like other people to speak. So Madeline and then Karen. <clears throat> oh yeah, uh, let's see. Well, I was thinking about the poem, uh, making guesses at the interpretations. Um, I see a structure of have and lack. Uh, Eternal Spring, at first glance, I think of daytime and dawn um, life, and that the, um, the simple things that make us happy, like, um, I don't know if these are cut flowers or outdoor flowers and wine, then for that moment that we are enjoying these things, we have Eternal Spring. Night. Uh, with its uh, yin connotations is making me think of the afterlife in this story. So perhaps um, if we don't bring our preconceived ideas with us, our own lights that we make in our minds, um, we can see that afterlife for what it is, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, maybe move on more quickly. Uh, so those are just my my guesses at the meaning of the poem. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Sounds sounds good. And uh, Karen. Um. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> backwards to the well. I guess I go. Uh, I was thinking about the the good deed that's intended. Just to play devil's advocate, um, you know, you could say that. Uh, that Kant would be one one to challenge this this idea, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, I could I could see that if um, if someone's intending to do something as a description, it's a good deed. Then you might say, well, that's not really admirable because they're trying to either impress the people around them or chalk one up with the the, the book of the you know the book of judgment kind of thing that you've been describing, and that would be well, that seems too utilitarian. Um, but you know, sort of Kant famously says do good things just because it's their nature or they just feel like doing it, they're unreliable, right? Because they might have a bad day or their, their personality might change. And so, um, so the only truly valuable good deeds are those that are intentionally done with this sort of, this vision of, I wanna be committed to doing the right thing, you know? So, so the good intent, so that's a, an interesting contrast. Now, I, I personally might side more with this version of event, this version of real, morality than Kant's, but I just wanted to play devil's advocate there and say that, you know, that, um, that there's, a, there's the opposite views been put forward. And then also that uh, for a wrong that is unintended, there is to be no, definitely agree that in our law system, uh, you know, we, we definitely think unintended crimes are, are less bad than intended ones. But I, I just heard an interesting podcast and yesterday um, from Malcolm Gladwell, part of uh, his revisionist history about the death by drunk driving of the author of Gone with the Wind. And he said at the time, everybody sort of thought, felt sorry for the driver as well, because they saw drunk driving as equally an accident for them. <laughs> you know, like that, that poor drunk driver, they didn't intend to hurt anyone. <laughs> and now, you know, and now they're really sad because they killed someone. <laughs> Um, you know, um, and 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 certainly attitudes have changed uh, to to that, right? Yeah, you didn't mean to hurt anybody, but you kind of you know put yourself into a position um, where you you know you caused a harm. So I think there is some idea, like for example, with global warming, like we didn't intend to trash the planet, but we know what we're doing, and so we're kind of also responsible for the situation that is 
a result of our actions, whether or not intended. Um, so yeah, so there's also a just to play devil's advocate because I, yeah, I think that it is a very sympathetic, interesting view. But yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's why I threw out the question because certainly depending on the perspective, right? That could be just wrong. What what this right. uh, answer is, right? Yeah, you just, yeah. you know, from the legalist school perspective. Reward and punishment is about shaping people's behavior. You should not care about mm -hmm. intent at all. Nor right. are you, you might say, like you said, or someone just doing good things like accidentally, is that really worth rewarding? Uh, so, mm -hmm. I, you know, there's different ways to, I, I think he's clever in the first story to throw out something that's, I think even at his time was probably controversial, you know, that, right. and, uh, yeah. Uh, Ian, you muted yourself. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to give a uh, little priority to people who haven't spoken yet. So I see Olga and then uh, Brian Nelson. Uh, and, and, then, and, then, and then we'll go to uh, Madeline and, uh, well, that's, that's what I see. So Olga, please. You're muted. Okay, uh, well, uh, Olga might be um, having connection problems, so we'll, we'll go to Brian Nelson. Oh, okay. This is Penny, actually. Hi, Penny. Hi. I was just looking at the second, uh, the poem there about the flowers and the wine. And, you know, looking at it, it seems to me that, like, flowers are, you know, like beauty, like nature. So if you have beauty and nature in your life and then wine, um, that would mean that you have all the things I think that you need to live well, because if you got wine, you probably got food and everything like that, because wine is a higher level. So to me, it's like, you know, it's a really good life if you have beauty and you have the things you need. Um, and so that's like, you know, spring, which would be the best time of year, you know, eternally. On the other side, I was thinking, I mean, just kind of looking at what really happens, you know, like if if you're in your house and it starts to go dark, it looks really dark outside if you've got light in your house. And then you walk outside and you're like, oh, it's not really dark out yet. But in my house, it looked really dark. So I feel kind of like they're saying, like, if you're in nature itself, and you're out there, then you can see, you can move around, you can, you can, you know, you're, you're at ease in that. But if you take the artificial light or candles, then you're, you're trying to shut out the dark and create this own little space for yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, those are very, very interesting interpretations. Appreciate it. Um, O Olga. Okay, I'm sorry, I got disconnected for some for some reason. So no uh, um, about intention and no intention. You said that Chinese um, characters they could be they could have many interpretations, and probably here that interpretation to do something with intention to be noticed. Maybe mm -hmm. there is some kind of, um, what kind of intention to be noticed? And there is someone saying that in Bible, in, in like New Testament, also that was said that if you praying um, in the public, in, in again, with intention to be noticed, that what kind of reward do you, do you, do you need more? So go and pray in your room and uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's you and it will be given to you. So that's, it, it's also there is in Bible, I remember something was like, um, uh, uh, do good to your enemies because a, uh, 
anyone do good to your friends, to, to, to friends, to people that do, do good to you. So do good to enemies who do something bad to you. Then it's like you be, will be rewarded more. So it's, there are probably, I don't know scripture that, uh, that good, but probably there are more parallels with other mm -hmm. religious systems. And I think that there is maybe in some, um, uh, I don't know something in this, what kind of intention it should be. If you, it's intention to be noticed, it's one, one thing. Uh, <clears throat> Without this intention, you will be rewarded um, in, <laughs> later. That's 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 it. What I wanted to say. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. E excellent points. I, I, yeah, exactly. Intention of what? I, and personally, I, I agree with you. I think it, he's pointing to intentions of how genuine are the good deeds. You know, are you doing this to yeah, like you said, to, for other people to see or 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 not? Um, Madeline and then Jason. Okay, uh, yes, well, I too lost my internet connection. I don't know why I pay enough for the damn thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it should follow me into the next world for what I pay. <laughs> um, I too thought of Kant, so I lost it uh, right right as the instant Karen finished speaking. So um, forgive me if I'm repeating what other people said in between. Uh, I also thought of Kant uh, when Joe was speaking. Um, I thought of I was going to say anything, but I sort of forgot who was here. I was like, okay, um, that. He believed that even if you weren't feeling it, even if you weren't feeling kind, even if you um, weren't in the mood to do a good deed, even if you were having a day or a lifetime in which you hated everyone around you and everyone who you'd ever met and had never met, it was still better to perform kind actions. And so um, I'm just wondering about the word intended here, does it really mean intended in the sense that we usually mean it in English, or does it mean more um, obscure, which might fit more with the yin de uh, theme? Yeah, that's it, the language itself is not clear, uh, probably intentional, intentional, just like the poem. Um, so my interpretation is that, yeah, it's related to the, this uh, accumulate obscure uh, good deeds, uh, but that's just my, my own take. Uh, Jason and then CK. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I like to talk about this poem, right? This uh, actually, he uh, just, uh, I think the method made it, uh, recognized it. It's a very well-structured uh, couplet. So if yeah. we pay attention, uh, they had to talk about having something and without something, right? Flower and wine and the candle and the lamp, and that's all strong contrast. And the spring, okay, means a happy hour, okay, constantly in there. And the, 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 the night itself is bright. So this all very well uh, match word by word, seven word, seven word. So uh, it put in, in this story, basically show, uh, I'm not sure what's the meaning, deep meaning there, but the, it shows the, the, the contrast between the yang world and the, the yin world, okay? And one has a flower and the wine and the constantly uh, springtime, and the, another one has no light, no candle, and it's dark, but they the author make a quick, Tweak, right? Because even during this time, it, it, the night itself is bright. So kind of hint their relationship, they are the, the, the song and the tongue, these two persons, heart, okay, can communicate, know each other, even without the candle and the light. That, that's my interpretation on that. But uh, I, I would like to see how uh, Pin read this one. Yeah. And another thing is about faith, okay? Uh, I think 
at, at least based on this story, it's, we are definitely being fated, okay? There's no way to change because uh, Song has been decided to die. At this moment, he has to die. And then his mother, is, according to the book, is nine, uh, nine years, so she can live for another nine years. And just recall on the, uh, uh, the story of a uh, uh, journey to the West, right? The handsome, the monkey kid, right? What he did, he went to the underworld. He just destroyed, to take out the book and then, and then erase uh, his name on the book. So he never died. So that's the way to do it. So in a way it's fated, but in a way you can change it. So just like uh, 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 the monkey king in the journey to the West, he went to underworld and just take out the book and remove his name and his friend's name. So they can live forever, right? And here also show how important of the filial piety, right? Only thing you can change it is filial piety. So they give you nine years, okay, holiday or uh, 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 to not uh, die for another night because, but if that you still need to die. So right after his mother's funeral, he just died, okay? So I think that's the uh, message here. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Well, since you asked, I'll, I'll share my interpretation real quick. Uh, and I teased that, of course, uh, you know, I went on Google and read about other people's interpretations of this poem. Um, so I think there are two layers to me. One is that you, in the plot, right, in the story, they this is, both of these guys had shocking findings. And even though overall there's not bad thing, it's gotta be very disturbing and sad in some way. You know, one, one guy, found out that he has nine years to live before he dies. And also his mother, uh, his, you know, his mother only has nine years. He, he has a limited amount of time with his mom. And then the other guy learns that he's gonna die immediately. And also, even though he's assigned this job, you know, it's only a nine year appointment. He doesn't know what's gonna happen after that. So he being a nice guy. So, you know, the story says they were holding hands as they, they were leaving the court. And so the and the guy gave him a poem. I think it's a poem of consolation, saying that don't worry, I'll be okay, and you'll be okay. The one that's like you said, the one that's in the young world, that's the corresponds to the first uh, first sentence verse here. That you know, in the young world, appreciate the small things in life. As long as you have flowers and and, and wine to drink, it's always spring for you. And the, the other one is, uh, you know, even though I'm going to go to the underworld, there's no light. There's, a, but I have a pure heart. So yeah, the night is still going to be bright for me. It, it's a, it's an abstract thing, you know. If you, and I, I think on the other layer, it's also, E L J. I think wrote in the in the tech, uh, text box that if in the original Chinese is really have heart, no heart, it it, it could also point to your true intentions. So I think this is the, the second verse is that when, you, when your intentions are pure, there's always brightness, no matter where you are, even if you're in, in, you know, in the underworld. So this is kind of a, it's also an explanation of, of the, the, the exam answer. So that's my intern, but you know, if these are all, very, I think intentionally very vague so that hundred people can get a hundred different things out of it. <laughs> so CK, uh, thank you for waiting. Oh, am I supposed to speak now? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I would like to make uh, some general comments outside of this story uh, because I think I, I've heard quite a lot about this story. Um, firstly, I would like to say that uh, Pu Songling wrote in a very economical and economically classical prose, which makes the uh, so called common folk easy to understand his his writings. Even today, if you, you know, for people who don't, did not have a classical Chinese education, I don't think it's too difficult uh, to uh, understand what he was writing about or what the, the way he wrote from his prose. Uh, secondly, Liao Zhai Zhiyi, that uh, this book, uh, interestingly, was uh, the favorite book of uh, a Marxist communist leader by the name of Deng Xiaoping that 
was his favorite book. You know, he 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 loves uh, Liao Daizhi more than uh, any 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 other Marxist literature, and he he read it quite uh, frequently, and uh, you know went back to, to it for uh, leisure and inspiration. And interestingly enough, the 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 the, the phrase or the quip that is commonly attributed to Deng Xiaoping, uh, to the likes of it doesn't matter whether the cat is black or white, as long as it as it catches mice. Uh, hey, mouse, by now, and your mouse will do how mouse. Uh, it's not really from Deng Xiaoping, and Deng Xiaoping never said it was he created this. It actually came from uh, Liao Zaijiri, from yeah. one of the stories, and in the yeah. the I don't remember which one it was, but I remember how it was written. It says, "Huang Li Bai Li, De Shu Zhe Xiong." Mm -hmm. So it conveys the same message. Like it doesn't matter whether the cat is uh, black or white, as long as it catches mice. So it has an influence, even you know, um, historically and politically uh, on on the uh, the uh, trajectory of uh, China somewhat, because one of its uh, probably one of its uh, greatest leaders in the modern in modern times read it. So that's uh, what what I thought I I I, I wanted to share with uh, uh, our readers or our uh, audiences here. Yeah, thank you. I, as I was, you know, doing a little research and reading about this. I also found out that uh, another famous communist uh, leader, the Mao Zedong, uh, during the shell massive shelling of mainland on on the uh, on the island Kimoi. Uh, during that time, Mao Zedong actually quoted a a one of the stories in uh, in Liao Zai, the one about Zhang Shen Jian Gui. Uh, he, uh, you know, I think the passage was the story of this this guy uh, running downstairs and he saw a ghost. I don't remember what exactly happened, you know, uh, but basically he he was scared, but he he didn't run away and and um, and nothing bad happened. So Mao was kind of saying, oh well, you know, we. Uh, he was making the analogy that uh, the U.S. is like the ghost. Uh, but good thing that we decide not to be afraid of the ghost and just start firing artillery at Kimoi and see that uh, not, you know, nothing bad is happening. Well, anyway, I, I'm just bringing this up that uh, these stories are so infused into our minds, you know, oftentimes when we think of something, uh, some story will just uh, randomly pop up. Uh, Jason. Yeah, if nobody has I thought about I think one thing I think is also uh, uh, was noted. I think it's a, it's a, a Kanishka has the talk about the question, the, the examination question, right? So there's no question mark. And mm -hmm. I think I don't think it's, it's through the 1,300 years. There's, I don't think they never have a question mark on the examination, I think, you know, because mm -hmm. usually. Uh, that's a typical uh, 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 title for you to write. And then uh, so-called the ADEX uh, writing that's typical in the Qing dynasty. And I think it were usually it's a quote from the one sentence or one phrase from the four books, either Confucius mentions uh, the, 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 the great learning or the doctrine of the mean. All right, so something like, uh, uh, I think the one time they call it uh, uh, 15 and start to make my mind to study. Okay, that's just the title from the Confucius uh, Analect. Mm -hmm. And then you have to start to write, the, based on this, you have to write it. And the, the way to write it, it's un very unlike in the Western culture. You will say, okay, I argue. Okay, the person has to go, no, no, there's no I. Okay, so basics, you can see the typical answer, right? You, you will say if you have the intention as uh, uh, intention to do the good deed is uh, uh, without with your intention good deeds no reward. So basically the answer is not like your opinion. Basically you are speak for the ancient sage. So basically that's the very uh, 
strange way to write in. Okay. And but if you go through this writer, if you survive this writing, mm -hmm. you will become a very good writer because you can write anything you supposed to write and without getting into any kind of trouble. Okay. So mm -hmm. if that's that's a great skill. If you don't mind put the effort, you know, you can learn. You know. Thank you, Jason. Well, I don't see any hands up. So maybe, uh, you know, if there's no further comments, we can we can uh, close close out this discussion. Yeah. yeah thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thanks any other question? Oh. I just put the uh, 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 for the next week we talk about the uh, 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 another philosopher in the Song Dynasty and uh, uh, this about the Qi. Okay, so basics uh, we have many way to understand Qi. So basics, the ghost. How does ghost exist? Right, that's also related to Qi. But that's um, that's not the thing I'm going to talk about next week. But basics, uh, even the how does ghost exist. That also use chi to explain it. All right, so I, I think that's many many way to uh, to to explain it. You know, so I, 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 that's just a little bit for the next week. Thank you so much. This was so fun. It was a great Halloween. Great. Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this Thank was you. fun. Thanks everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah I enjoyed it. This well. was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> I don't think anybody will fall asleep for this one. So. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you, right. Ben. Uh, thank right. you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Have a great Ken. weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jason. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.